It's been an extraordinary year. You faced unprecedented challenges. COVID-19, lockdown, furlough, social distancing. Words we're now living with daily. But you've succeeded against the odds. And our judges have done their job to their usual high standards. Let's celebrate the 40th anniversary year of Pride in the Job. Together, we've done the competition proud. It's time to feel the pride. Let's meet the best of the UK house building industry and celebrate the Pride in the Job Regional Awards 2020. Sorry about that. I was obviously on mute, so I'll start again. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Pride in a Job Virtual Awards for the West Region, our 40th year anniversary celebration. At this point, I would normally say, welcome to the magnificent ICC here in Birmingham. But unfortunately this year, we're not able to be at that venue. Or are we? No, that's too far north, but a magnificent venue nonetheless. Now that's a bit closer, but not right. No, still not right. Do I have to pretend to drag it across the screen again? Can't I just click my fingers like this? Still not right though. There we are, that's the one. The beauty of green screen technology, eh? I opened this event last year by referring to some things that never change. Oh, how wrong I'd be if I said the same thing this year. In previous opening speeches, I've spoken about the B word, meaning Brexit, and the difficulties we thought that would create for us. This year, I'll need to speak about the C word. What an unprecedented event it's been for us all, changing life as we know it and stopping everything in its tracks. Until it came to house builders and top quality site managers, that is. I'll say a little more about that in a minute. For the first time in 40 years of pride in the job, we find ourselves presenting the awards to your magnificent site managers using a whole range of modern technology. NHBC and our production team have had to be creative, flexible and agile, and that is what our winning site managers have shown in abundance to maintain the quality and standards required to win an NHBC pride in the job award. This industry never ceases to amaze me with its can-do and nothing's going to get in our way attitude. So the drive, determination, enthusiasm and skill that I often refer to has been needed in bucket loads this year. And oh, how our 39 quality award winners have demonstrated that. What's also worth a mention is that of our 39 quality award winners, 15 are first time winners, which I think is a fantastic number given the circumstances. What a shame then that they don't get to experience the buzz of the live event, but I'm sure their companies are laying on something special for them, so chapeau to you all. And now, joining me this afternoon, I'd like to welcome someone who will be familiar to some of you from several previous Pride in the Job Awards. He's made stand-up and panel appearances on Comedy Central, BBC One, BBC Three and Sky One, and we're delighted to welcome him back. Ladies and gents, it's Andrew Ryan. Yes, hello. Uh, delighted to be here, ladies and gentlemen, to take part in another Pride in the Job Awards. I was told that this year I would be co-hosting alongside a Shrewsbury Town footballing legend, but unfortunately he couldn't make it today, so I'm left with Paul. 
It's great to see everybody in a rather different format than usual. Normally we would be in a hotel, having food, having drinks, catching up with work colleagues and friends. But this year, obviously, it's all very different. Among my time working with NHBC, I've been consistently impressed by the professionalism and dedication of the UK's house builders when they turn up on time. I hope that you've all been having a really good global pandemic. Uh, mine's been fantastic. I've been away from my family for most of it, which has been great. And uh, fingers crossed, next year's pandemic is equally as good. During the pandemic, obviously, you get to miss a lot of family events, which for some people is a good thing. For me, it's a brilliant thing. Uh, my sister celebrated her 10th year wedding anniversary and we were supposed to have a big party for that. And I remember speaking to my sister about it. I rang her up and I said, you know, do you still love your husband, Michael? after 10 years of being married. And she said the most wonderful thing because when you're in the middle of a pandemic and you're spending 24 seven together, it's very difficult. She said to me, Andrew, I love Michael more today than I did yesterday. And I will love him more tomorrow than I do today. And I thought, wow, that's real love, isn't it? And she said, what I mean by that is Andrew, I love him more tomorrow than I do today because tomorrow is a day closer to dying. And the thing is, you learn a lot about your family, don't you, when you have lockdown, right? I love my family. Like, they're really, really good at a distance, right? But my mother, a great woman, right? I remember, like, she's a very typical Irish woman, you know? She used to ask you questions, right? And then answer those questions in the same sentence, right? A fantastic thing parents do, right? I remember once my mum rang me up one September, and she rang me up and she went, Andrew, do you know your brother, Ian? I was like, I do, yeah, yeah, like he's my brother. She goes, well, I just wanted to tell you something about your brother Ian. Your brother Ian is thinking about proposing to his girlfriend on Christmas Day. I said, what are you telling me that for? It's September. She said, I just wanted to warn you. If your brother Ian rings you on Christmas Day to tell you that he's engaged, I want you to act surprised. I said, well, why did you not stop bloody tell me then? And I'd be surprised, right? And guess what? Christmas Day, my brother gets engaged, never even rang me, right? Sent me a text, one word, no emotion, engaged. I didn't know whether to get married or locked in the toilets, right? I rang my mother back up and I was like, Mammy, come here, do you know your son Ian? She was like, I do, yeah. I said, well, he's just after telling me he's after getting engaged. What? He's engaged? He's not told me yet, you spoiled my bloody surprise as well. When I was growing up as a kid, my parents used to pay me money to behave at family events. I used to get a bit of pocket money for like doing jobs around the house. I'm sure during lockdown, you've had your kids doing jobs for you, you know, to keep them busy while they're not at school, right? And I remember, you know, I used to have to go to the petrol station, get the bread, the milk, the butter, the bacon, come home. I might get, you know, like uh, five euro. I might get to stay up a half an hour late. I might find out who my dad was. You know what I mean? But like when, now that I'm older and I'm in my 30s, Right, my mom still gets me to do work for her around the house, and I don't even live in the country. Right, she's outsourced the work. She rang me up recently. She said, "Andrew, I need you to do me a favour." She goes, "Your sister Kira has put on a lot of weight recently. I need you to ring her up and have a go with her for putting on all the weight." Now, can you imagine that? The damage to her self-esteem that somebody from another country who hasn't seen her physical appearance for six months, he's just gonna ring her up out of the blue. I did it, right, because there was 10 euro in it. Right, so I rang my sister up and I was like, hi, Kira, how are you? She goes, yeah, Andrew, I'm great. I'm like, ooh, you sound fat. Jeez, I'm on Google Maps, I can see you from here. During the pandemic, you know, people are a lot more conscious about safety and security. My parents have gone completely overboard, right? My parents live in Cork, I live in London, right? My dad rang me up and he said, Andrew, I need you to post home the house keys. I was like, are you serious? Why? He goes, security, you can never be too careful, right? I said, why? He goes, well, Andrew, you could go out tonight in London, you could drop the house keys, someone could pick them up, they could fly over to Cork, they could come down to the house and they could rob the house. That's what could happen. I said, really, I don't think that's gonna happen, right? And you know what the strange thing about this is? If you ever go and visit my parents' house, right? Next to the front door, there's a purple flower pot. You go over to that, you lift that flower pot up, it's near the right window. You lift it up, there's a set of keys there for the front door, right? So you know what? My parents live at 56 Glenwood, Carrigaline, County Cork. Off you go, fill your boots. All you'll find in the house is a broken stand of stair lift and a house full of religious bigotry. What I've been trying to do recently, obviously, is uh, trying to save a little bit of money, okay? So, and we all, we're all trying to save a bit of money, aren't we? You know what I mean? So I got a new mobile phone. And I went into the phone shop to buy this new mobile phone, right? Absolutely very, very happy with the phone. But while I was in there, the sales assistant 
right? You know, they want to make money as well. So they started to try and sell me insurance for the phone, you know? And I didn't want insurance because it's an extra nine pound, nine, 10 pound a month. So what he did was he started to ask me questions to see what I would do if something happened to the phone, right? And I didn't want the insurance. He said to me, now, Mr. Ryan, you've signed up to this amazing new phone today. I want to ask you how you're going to protect yourself if something happens to that phone. I have a duty of care. I need to ask you a few questions about insurance. I'm like, I don't want insurance. He goes, no, I have to do it. I'm like, okay. He said, uh, he goes, what are you going to do, Mr. Ryan? What are you going to do if you lose your phone? You know, when you lose your mobile phone, you ring it from the landline. You're like, oh God, I've got to find me phone. You're looking around the house for it. You find it down the back of the settee and you pick it up and you're like, oh my God, one missed call. You rang yourself, right? This guy goes to the next level again. He goes, what are you going to do, Andrew, if you drop your phone down the toilet? I said, listen, when I'm standing over a toilet, I'm normally holding something else, right? Sorry, I'm normally holding something else, right? Then he escalates it and he goes, right, Mr. Ryan, he says, you go out tonight, you go to a pub, you put your phone on a table, someone walks past that phone, picks it up, steals it, gone, quick. Do you know how easy it is to steal a mobile phone? And you ring the police and you tell the police that phone's been stolen, they're going to do nothing about it. So you might need insurance to protect yourself. You go to the pub, you put it down, someone swipes it, police aren't going to look for it. So I'm going to ask you again, how are you going to replace your phone if it gets stolen? I said, well, based on what you've just told me, that they're easy to steal and the police aren't interested in looking for them, I'm just going to nick one. And that's the thing about insurance, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be a little bit careful about what you, what you take out, you know. But NHBC have been providing great cover for builders for many years. Even more impressive when we consider the 40 year history of the awards. At the start, it was all a little understated. Determined to raise the quality of house building in the UK, a small group of experts created a competition to identify the industry's most committed site managers. They chose just one winner in that first year, recognised in a low-key ceremony. Word got out, more and more house builders wanted to recognise their site managers. And over four decades, pride in the job has grown into the most highly regarded competition in our industry. It rewards excellence on sites of every size and shape. It acts as a beacon for customers looking for new homes of the highest quality. And it's the one every site manager wants to win. So let's celebrate 40 years of success and meet the Pride in the Job Quality Award winners 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our Pride in the Job Quality Award winners for the West. James Bridges of Belway Homes West Midlands. Simon Campbell of Barrett Homes Mercia. Hayley Chilton of Barrett West Midlands. Darren Clark of Taylor Wimpy North Midlands. Ori Cox of St. Modwin Homes. Ian Crockford of Barrett West Midlands. Ashley Doyle of David Wilson Homes East Midlands. Jamie Duggan of Taylor Wimpy West Midlands. Gary Dias of Bloor Homes Midlands. Rob Ellis of St. Modwin Homes. Tom Fitzpatrick of David Wilson Homes Mercia. Mark Follos of Lioncourt Homes. Ian Green of Barrett Homes Mercia. Jeff Hale of First Post Homes. Adam Harrison of Vistry Homes, Mercia Region. Lee Harkshorn of Cameron Homes. Craig Ison of David Wilson Homes, East Midlands. Kia Jones of Miller Homes, West Midlands. Ian Larkins of Red Row Homes, Midlands. Lee Larkins of Bellway Homes, West Midlands. Gary Lever of Taylor Wimpy, West Midlands. Ryan Lewis of Carla Homes Midlands. Paul Matthews of Bellway Homes East Midlands. Paul Moore of David Wilson Homes Mercia. Dean Newbold also of David Wilson Homes Mercia. John Nichols of Bloor Homes Midlands. Tim O'Toole of Spitfire Bespoke Homes. 
Stuart Parker of Bellway Homes, West Midlands. Adam Parsons of David Wilson Homes, Mercia. Kirk Rain of David Wilson Homes, Mercia. Kevin Sidwell of Barrett, West Midlands. Jamie Smith of Bellway Homes, West Midlands. Craig Taylor of Carla Homes, Midlands. Kevin Tonks of James O'Flanagan. Andy Tromans of Taylor Wimpy Midlands. Oliver Wardlaw of David Wilson Homes, Mercia. Kieran Wheeler of Bovers Homes, West Midlands. Jamie Wood of Taylor Wimpy Midlands. And finally, Oliver Yazdiampour of Taylor Wimpy Midlands. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. That is what first-class site management in the West region looks like. It is a fantastic achievement that here in the West region, we have had so many Pride in the Job quality award winners this year. Standards get higher each year and consequently, it gets harder and harder to judge the awards. That's a sure sign of the respect people give Pride in the Job, especially because this year, a lot of our winners have found themselves having to overcome the unprecedented challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's NHBC's Chief Executive, Steve Wood, to talk more about Pride in the Job in this extraordinary year. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be with you all today, even in this virtual world, for this Pride in the Job awards ceremony. It should be more fun than any of the other Zoom calls I've been on, that's for sure. Of course, this isn't how we'd like to be celebrating with you all, but extraordinary, unprecedented times call for a different approach. I am delighted, not to say really proud, that we've been able to continue with the Pride in the Job competition this year. In my view, in NHBC's view, it's extremely important to recognise the elite within our profession, to acknowledge your achievements and to toast your success in being quality award winners. Apart from it being a special year because of COVID-19, it's also special because it is the 40th anniversary of Pride in the Job. So let's celebrate the Oscars of the house building industry in its 40th year. Cheers. Pride in the Job really is the most highly regarded competition in house building. I don't really need to tell you that it's one that all site managers want to win, with some describing it as the pinnacle of their career. Over the past 40 years, NHBC has recognized the very best site managers across the UK, those showcasing best practice, delivering an excellent product on site and setting standards for others to aspire to. We're committed to continuing to celebrate the vital role that site managers and their teams play, with NHBC working alongside you, ensuring that new homes are delivered on time, on safe sites and to exacting construction quality standards. Our judges have singled you out from more than 11,000 site managers across the country. Each of you has stood out for the exceptional quality you have delivered and for your passion in getting things right, whatever pressure you are put under. You are responsible for building homes that make a real difference to people's lives. Don't forget that. Homes which your companies and indeed the house building industry as a whole are very proud of. The ethos and standards you instill on site resonate very strongly with NHBC's purpose, what we're here for, the very qualities that have underpinned the Pride in the Job Awards since inception in 1981. I know you'll all be on the edge of your seats, hoping to go through to the next round of the competition, but before we get to that, I really want to emphasize that whether or not you go on to win a SEAL, a regional, or even a national title, you have already achieved a level of excellence that thousands of other site managers can only dream of. You should be incredibly proud of what you've accomplished. I know your employers are, and I know your site teams certainly are. So please take a moment to reflect on what you've achieved and above all, to enjoy the recognition you so richly deserve. Best of luck to all of you. Thank you. So we've met our West Quality Award winners for 2020. And of course, that's not the final stage of the competition. Now it's time to announce what you've all been waiting to hear who's made it through to the next stage of the competition and won a highly coveted Seal of Excellence award. What makes a Seal of Excellence winner? Exceptional leadership skills, happy customers, or the ability to go that extra mile in search of superlative quality? 
In truth, it's a combination of all those and more besides. And the site managers whose names we're about to announce are truly among the very best in their field. Well, come on then, Paul, why don't you just tell us who they are? Our first Seal of Excellence winner today is a man who is no stranger to pride in a job at the very highest level. Working on the next phase of a fast-moving site, he hasn't taken his eye off the importance of a quality product. Groundworks, drainage and overall finishes were the highlights when judging this development. This manager's desire is to get the best out of all of his trades and encourage them to be the best that they can be. He's a manager whose passion outside of work are his two daughters from Taylor Wimpy, North Midlands. Congratulations, Darren Clark, on another Seal of Excellence Award to add to his collection. Congratulations, Darren, our first winner here in the West region. Next up is a site manager who has really got the pride in the job bug over the past few years and clearly understands the ingredients required to win an award. Running a site with difficult ground conditions plus several ground level differences, the quality achieved in substructure works and roofing were particularly commendable. A man who sees himself as being a constant learning curve, both at work and on the golf course, from David Wilson Holmes Mercia, congratulations go to Dean Newbold. Congratulations, Dean. It seems like if you play golf, there's a good chance you're going to win an award. Our next winner is a manager who is very hands-on and finds it difficult not to get involved in the build. This manager which was judged across two separate developments, but managed to maintain very high standards from one development to another. Carpentry works across the whole of the build from roofing to second fix, plus the overall high quality of the finishes were of particular note to us as judges. As well as building quality homes, this man can also build a quality garden den. From James O'Flanagan, congratulations, Kevin Tonks. Congratulations, Kevin, and uh, we hope you celebrate with this award down in your den for a few drinks or something. Our next winner is a man who has been involved with our industry for over 30 years and has constantly plugged away at improving quality on his sites. This is a manager who focuses on detail and sees this as being paramount to achieving quality. First fix works were particularly impressive, as were the substructure works, with this manager's calm demeanor also impressing us as judges. Outside of work, this man highly values time away with his family, but being a Manchester United supporter proves that all his decisions aren't correct. From Bellway Homes, West Midlands, congratulations, Lee Larkins. Congratulations, Lee. Hopefully this is a time now where fortunes change, where you win awards and so Man United win trophies too. Next up is a site manager who is one of our 15 first time winners. So what a year this is turning into for him. The outstanding quality that struck us about this manager was his knowledge of what was happening on site and obviously his attention to detail. Plus a couple of neat touches he's introduced himself. There was a great feeling of positivity amongst the trades, which is a clear indication of the can-do culture this manager has created on site. He likes to be part of a great team on site and a great team at his local rugby club. From David Wilson Homes, East Midlands, congratulations, Craig Ison. Congratulations, Craig, on being a winner here in the West, and fingers crossed for many more to come. The next Seal of Excellence Award goes to a man who has over 30 years experience in the industry, with in excess of 20 as a site manager. So it's clear he knows what he's doing. Very experienced in his job, and very experienced in pride in the job, having won many awards in the past. 
Building quality homes is a passion for this manager, plain and simple, and he accepts nothing but the higher standards. Describing himself as being very lucky to be blessed with his two beautiful children, from David Wilson Homes Mercia, congratulations go to multi-award winning Kirk Rain. Congratulations, Kirk. You win a lot. It's getting a bit boring now. Maybe take a year off from the quality. And so we reach lucky number seven and the halfway point of our seal of excellence winners for this afternoon. Another experienced site manager who knows the home building industry inside out. He has returned to the competition this year with a bang. There were lots of notable build stages for us judges to peruse over, but substructure works and internal finishes were of particular note. This manager recently got down with the kids by having his first tattoo at 45 years of age. From Taylor Wimpy Midlands, congratulations go to Andy Tromans. Congratulations Andy Tromans. Hopefully now you'll go off and get yourself another tattoo. Our next winner is one of our younger site managers but still with good experience in the industry, both as a tradesman and as a manager. Always looking for the next area to improve on, this site manager simply will not stand still. Building out his attracted development in the north of our region, many build elements were notable for their very high quality. Being someone who loves to travel with his family, 2020 has been difficult for him on this front, but at least his beloved Aston Villa survived to fight another day in the Premier League. From David Wilson Homes Mercia, it's the reigning regional winner in the large builder category. Congratulations, Paul Moore. Congratulations, Paul, and hopefully next season Aston Villa can stay up as well. Next up is a manager who gets joy from creating a team of quality tradesmen who try to give their best every day. This manager sees consistency as the key, with culture being a close second, and this was reflected in the many areas of high quality build throughout the development, with brick and block work being particularly noticeable. A man who is also a keen traveller and has essentially built the Great Wall of Stoke on his site, from St. Modwin Homes, congratulations go to Ori Cox. Congratulations to Ori Cox. You won last year, you've won this year. What happens next year? Hopefully more consistency. Our 10th Seal of Excellence winner for this afternoon is another manager with in excess of 20 years experience in the industry, both as a tradesman and a manager. As with other managers, consistency of build quality was the key to success in winning this Seal of Excellence award. A man who is berating COVID as it restricted him from playing snooker, from Vistry Homes Mercia region, congratulations, Adam Harrison. Congratulations, Adam, on winning. It looks like you shot yourself a 147 today. The next winner is probably the calmest site manager I've ever come across. He never seems to get flustered, no matter what is thrown at him. Just stop throwing stuff at him then. Good point. Working on a large development with a number of different house types, plus a fair portion of MMC work, Overall site organisation and control were particularly noticeable when arriving on site. It goes without saying that in many, many areas build quality was high, as was the morale of trades on this site. I've mentioned this manager's calmness, but I'm sure he didn't remain calm at Leicester City's end to last season. From Barrett Homes Mercia, congratulations, Ian Green. Congratulations, Ian, and as a Manchester United fan, thank you so much for messing up at the end of last season. And so, on to another of our first-time quality award winners. 
who will double up this year with a Seal of Excellence award as well. A former bricklayer who has self-educated and progressed through the ranks of site management, he's building on a very fast-moving site with many additional topographical problems to overcome. A man who likes to innovate and bring his own philosophy onto site, the quality being produced when looking at the numbers output is impressive. Naturally competitive and a keen sports fan, with golf being his favourite, from Taylor Wimpy Midlands, congratulations, Jamie Wood. Congratulations, Jamie, another golfer picking up a prize today. Our penultimate winner today is another former bricklayer who has progressed into site management. Working on a sloping site with all the problems that brings, this site manager has produced quality of a very high standard indeed. First fix elements were of particular note, but the overall control of a busy site was noticeable and commendable. A man who likes to build people's dreams and then get off to mountain biking and boxing training. From Bellway Homes, West Midlands, congratulations go to James Bridges. Congratulations, James. Well done on a knockout blow. And so, on to our final 2020 Seal of Excellence winner for the West Region. A manager with over 40 years experience in the industry and in excess of 30 as a site manager. Building on a consortium site is never easy, but this manager makes it look easy due to his excellent communication skills, his organization and his ability to have everyone pulling in the same direction. Many areas of the build were impressive, but the MMC sections were very well executed and proved that new methods of construction definitely have their place in the future of home building. A man who strives to better himself and who enjoys passing on his knowledge to the young guns. From Barrett West Midlands, it's mad motorcyclist, Ian Crockford. Congratulations, Ian, being our final winner today on the Seal of Excellence, so well done. 14 great sites, 14 great managers, 14 truly impressive house building developments. Well done to all our Seal of Excellence winners. You're already the best among the top 1% of site managers in the UK. But of course, we're here to celebrate an even more select group, the very best of the best in this region. Let's take a moment to reflect on what that means. What does it feel like to be a regional Pride in the Job award winner? To get a regional, it doesn't get much better than that. It's, it's so emotional, it's unbelievable. In this climate, you know, another award winner, it's got, to, it's got to be good for the business. I've shed a few tears leading up to this event. This means a lot to me personally. I couldn't really believe it. Sort of, like, sort of had to look and say, you know, is that really me? Absolutely fantastic. Can't put this in the words. I've won, a, I've won a few, this is the best one yet. It's probably 17, 18 years of hard work and it's a dream come true. You get the flags flying on the site, you get the signs up, everybody knows and it kind of gives that little bit of a vibe. I feel really honoured, to be honest with you, to be stood here talking to you right now. I just looked around at my two daughters at the time uh, and my wife sat beside me and uh, I think they were over the moon. That makes me feel like pride. I've just had a knee replacement. I thought if I trip up, I'm going to get the biggest round of applause of the night. Let's tell everybody that we've won this award and we can do it again. And we can do it for you. The competition gets a hold of you, you want to come back. Once you get the first award, just make sure I go again and again. It's a motivator within the housing industry and long may it continue. Wasn't expecting it. I'm really, really proud. It's an honour for all the boys. Dream come true. It's time to find out who among today's winners will go on to represent the West at Pride in the Job Supreme Awards in 2021. We're about to name the best of the best. They're all quality award winners. They're all Seal of Excellence award winners. 
And now we're ready to meet the elite in three of the categories that make up the Pride in the Job Awards. We will start with the regional winner in the small builder category for builders registering up to 50 homes a year with NHBC. Our winning site impressed the judges for their attention to detail, their organisation, their hands-on skill and pure enjoyment of building a quality product. Paul, can you tell us who the winner is? A joy to judge and a man with infectious enthusiasm. From James O'Flanagan, it's Kevin Tonks. Up next, the medium category for site managers working for builders registering between 51 and 1,000 homes each year. Our winning site made an impact on the judges for the consistency of the quality across the site, his knowledge of all the processes taking place on the site, plus an unquestionable desire to produce a quality product for his customers. Paul, can you reveal the winner? Former players of Stoke City would be proud of what he's producing on their old stomping ground. It's Ori Cox of St Modwin Homes. Our final category today is the large builder category for site managers working for builders, registering more than 1,000 homes each year. Our winning site made an impact on the judges for tenacity to produce the best and for something that can be described in one word, quality. Paul, tell us who's won. He's back with a bang. It's Kirk Rain of David Wilson Homes Mercia. Congratulations to all our winners this afternoon and thank you so much for having me at the NHBC Pride in the Job Awards for the West Region. I also want to say a big thank you to Paul for having me here as well. Paul, did you play over 300 times for Shrewsbury Town Football Club? I did, Andrew. Amazing that, because you don't stop banging on about it. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I've got to go, Paul. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a highly unusual year at the Pride in the Job Regional Awards. But we can all see that the quality of your work is better than ever. So congratulations to all our winners. Receiving a Pride in the Job Award is a tremendous achievement and you should all be exceptionally proud. Of course, our warmest congratulations go to our regional award winners and we look forward to you joining us at the Pride in the Job Supreme Awards. Finally, thank you to everyone for supporting these awards. Our winners and their teams all of the NHBC building inspectors and inspection managers, our judges and our production team. Goodbye for now and enjoy your celebration today.